Hi, this is Annie Grace. So we are going to talk about how to stop drinking, what support is available, and specifically what are the key things that I think are absolutely vital, the three key things in changing your relationship with alcohol, whether you want to stop or you want to moderate or exactly what you want to do. So I'm Annie Grace. I'm the author of This Naked Mind and the Alcohol Experiment, and I am going to dive into this very important topic. So basically, there are so many ways and to think about stopping drinking. And I would say that there is two fundamental differences in how people approach stopping drinking. A lot of people reach a pain threshold. You could call this a rock bottom or a moment of time where things just feel like I can't go on like this anymore, where the cost of alcohol is far greater than the benefits and they just say enough, I've had enough. And they start the journey of stopping drinking, but they do it from a mindset of, I want to be able to do this thing, but it's causing me too much pain. So I need to stop now, even though ideally I wouldn't want to stop. Ideally, I would want to go back in time to where I could drink quote normally. And so I think that's one kind of area of how people stop reaching enough pain, realizing, okay, they need to make a change, making that change, but making that change often with the mindset of this sucks because I would actually rather it be different. I would rather not have to change my drinking. I would rather fit in. I would rather be a drinker, at least an occasional drinker. I'm just not happy with how much pain alcohol is causing me and how much I'm drinking. So that's one mindset. The second one I think is really what my work focuses on is actually not changing your behavior in the short term, but getting super insanely curious without judgment about why you're doing that behavior in the first place. And so you actually don't change your behavior and you can come at this from pain. You can certainly come at this from, I've had enough. I really need to change this and then have the faith that actually changing it might mean not changing it in the short term in order to really change it effectively in the long term. Or you can come at it from just curiosity. Like, I think my life might be a bit better if I drank a bit less, or I think that, you know, I might be happier or I'm just curious about how it would be because I keep hearing all these people talking about how great it is to be alcohol free and like what what could it be for me and this path is much different it is really about with curiosity going why am I doing this to begin with why does this thing seem to have power over me that nothing else seems to have why do I spend so much time thinking about drinking why is drinking such a key aspect in my life what is going on here and asking those questions and finding the answers without the added noise of the pressure of quitting, wanting to drink, beating yourself up for drinking again, et cetera, et cetera. So it's actually kind of taking the pressure off and saying, you know what? I am going to completely and totally focus on understanding this and looking with total curiosity at my behavior. And so in this, in this path, we would do things like, all right, I'm actually going to time how long does having a drink make me feel good. How long is it really? So I have one glass of wine, I set a timer and I say, okay, I'm starting to feel pretty good. When do I start to feel kind of not so good? And the interesting thing about alcohol is it works that the nice feelings are when your blood alcohol content is rising. And then the not so nice feelings happen when your blood alcohol content starts to fall. Now the nice feelings, when you time this, you'll realize it's about 20 minutes max. Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more if you have a full stomach. The not so nice feelings of your blood alcohol falling, where alcohol becomes a depressant, that couldn't be two to three hours for one drink. And that's restlessness, uneasiness. So you see this in real life in your own personal experience. And of course, what we do, what do we do when those nice, not so nice feelings kick in? We reach for another drink and we keep that, you know, rising as long as we can, which is why instead of just one glass of wine, we're often drinking four, five, six, because of this very, you know, predictable pattern of what alcohol does in the body. And so you get really curious about this stuff, but without judging yourself, without saying, oh, I'm just so weak because I'm only, you know, I can't just have one. I'm so weak. This is my problem because that doesn't help. I believe that actually, um, I think there's three key things. If we're going to talk about the second path, this path of, of not quitting from a place of of really pain and deprivation, but from a place of curiosity and then decision based on what you really want once you know all the facts. And and that's really what I teach. This second path, there's three key things, three core components. Number one is self-compassion. 
kind of above all else is self-compassion. And that is understanding why alcohol is doing what it's doing in your life. Understanding that alcohol is addictive to human beings who have brains and blood and cells and skin, like not just a certain percentage of human beings, but all human beings and in different capacities and different situations, it varies obviously, but understanding that and letting yourself off the hook, really approaching this with like, oh, my body by getting addicted to alcohol or wanting to drink more than I used to want to drink is actually doing exactly what it was designed to do, exactly what it was designed to do. And so I can let myself off the hook and approach this with self-compassion and curiosity. So that's number one, self-compassion combined with curiosity. So I would also say, this is curiosity without judgment. Why am I doing what I'm doing? How much am I doing? What is the cost of it? How much does it really make me feel better without judgment? Number two is mindset. And this is the process of learning all the things that you need to learn about alcohol. We literally know more about the side effects of Advil than we do about the side effects of the thing. Like in my case, I was consuming much more than anything. I literally think I was eating less calories in food than I was drinking in alcohol, meaning I was drinking more calories in alcohol than I was actually eating in food. So I was consuming more alcohol in terms of like caloric intake than food, yet I knew less about the side effects than I did about, I would be like, oh, I can't take three Advil because I don't know, that just doesn't, I, I know that it, there are side effects with my liver. And so really educating yourself. And when you educate yourself, your mindset shifts. So again, in scenario one, when you're doing it with pain and then you're not learning the and outs of alcohol, but you're just kind of white knuckling it. You feel the sense of deprivation. You're never learning that actually the things that alcohol has been promising you that it says it does like reducing stress or, you know, giving you an escape or helping you feel better. It doesn't actually do those things. Like literally the science is very clear. It doesn't actually do those things. I can explain to you exactly why we think it does those things. And that's super interesting and super compelling. But once you understand the ins and outs of that, you approach this with a totally different mindset. You know, it really becomes a mindset of, oh man, I don't, I don't think I want to do that. I, I see that that glass of wine is just gonna increase my cortisol levels instead of actually providing relief from my stressful day. I don't want that glass of wine. And so your mindset shifts. So again, number one, self-compassion with curiosity, curiosity without judgment, okay? Self-compassion, number one. Number two is mindset actually going into the understanding and learning about the substance of alcohol in the brain in order to understand what it's doing and how it's not doing what we think it's doing. It's not delivering on what we believed based on our entire societal influences, what we thought it should do. And number three, and I would say these are most important, the most important one is number three, and it actually, because both number one and number two play into it, is emotion. It is the emotion that you bring to this habit change that is the like overall most important thing. So in scenario one, you're bringing an emotion of, oh my gosh, I'm in so much pain. I have to make this change. This sucks. I feel deprived. I wish I could be normal. I wish it was like it used to be. I'm so upset. This is a very negative emotion, right? And so you go on and you try to make this change. And yeah, if the pain's bad enough, you can be successful. Um, but it's a success that is wrought with tragedy and feeling sad and feeling, you know, mourning alcohol. A lot of instances, people say that, you know, they've mourned alcohol and, and there is a place for that, but like just understanding the emotion, of like just really mourning what was and the fact you have to change and, and that negative emotion. Now, in this other way, when we're focusing on self-compassion, that's positive emotion, understanding why you're doing what you're doing. That engenders hope, that engenders like understanding, that engenders acceptance of yourself, that engenders peace, right? Those are positive emotions. Mindset, really realizing, looking at something and be like, huh, it's not that I can't drink this. It's not that I really want to, but I'm not going to allow myself to because I've just gotten myself in trouble with this. It's that because I understand it now, because I understand what it's doing in my brain and my body, I don't want to drink this. And that is a huge difference. And so both of those things, self-compassion and mindset contribute to you make a change from a positive place of emotion. So what resources are available to you to access this second way, this place of self-compassion, mindset, and positive emotion? 
there's really four key pillars and that is community. There's tons of free communities, specifically on Facebook. We've got this Naked Mind community, the alcohol experiment community. Community is so important because you're with like-minded people who are also on this path to change, who are helping you with the self-compassion, with the mindset and with the um, positive emotion. Number two is content and curriculum. Now there's so many things you can do. You can join the alcohol experiment. It's for free every single day. We deliver a video, which is content, exactly what alcohol is doing in your brain and body. We deliver an email. We deliver like some journaling prompts. If you really want to go deep, it's totally free. It's always available at alcoholexperiment.com. So we've got community, we've got content, which is really important. And also the podcast is great content. Um, and then you really have coaching. So if you wanted to really dig in deeper, you can join either a live alcohol experiment with a coach, or we have plenty of certified This Naked Mind coaches um, that you can find at thisnakedmind.com. But this is really working one-on-one -on -one or in a group coaching situation. Um, or you can join the path at, I believe it's taepath.com or nakedmindpath.com. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. I'm going to have to look. Um, Okay, or you can join the path at nakedmindpath.com and that comes coaches every single day you have coaching. Coaches are going live. So coaching is just such an important way to do that. And then the last thing I would say is connection, like actually building relationships, real life relationships with people who are on the same path with you. And those four things are really the resources that are available to you. And again, with, with content, with mindset shift, there's also the books, The Snake in Mind and The Alcohol Experiment. Um, there's so many other communities and so many other books as well. Obviously, this is something that you wanna find what works for you. If, if me and my work doesn't work for you, find what works for you. That's the most important thing. And so I believe though that the change that happens that is painless and easy and sustaining is based on those three key pillars of self-compassion, you know, curiosity without judgment, mindset, and positive emotion. And I believe that the resources available, if you had to break them down into like really four basic things, they would be content. So the content you get, whether it's through a book or through a podcast or through the alcohol experiment, community, the communities that you can immerse in and you can really go deep and hear other people's stories including the podcast is a great place of community because we tell so many stories. People come on and tell their stories. Um, coaching, where you can actually join uh, nakedmindpath.com or you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then connection, where you are actually building real life relationships with people who are also on this journey, all facilitated through the first three. And so I think that those are some of the most amazing resources. And if you don't know where to start, if all of that was super overwhelming to you, you're like, oh my gosh, this all sounds great, but I don't know where to start. I would say join us at the free alcohol experiment at alcoholexperiment.com. And that will give you all of those components and really take you down this second path of self-compassion and mindset and positive emotion.